Today we're going to talk about how to choose your next lens for photography. Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. This is Dylan Goldby, a photographer here in Seoul. Today we're going to have a chat about how to choose your next lens for photography. It's a complicated question, it's an expensive question, and can be quite a heavy question depending on what you uh, typically shoot. So we're going to go into a few different ways that I look at how a lens would work for me when I go to purchase one. So I think that a great starting point when looking at purchasing a lens is to remember that it's a very personal decision. This is a lens that you are going to use to make the kind of photographs that you want to make. So you need to be aware of the effect that you're going for and the type of lens that can create that in order to choose the right lens. So I think it's very easy to get caught up in things like technical qualities, whether a lens is a hair sharper than another, or whether its focus is you know, 0 0.001 of a second faster than another. And all of these things, although they can be important for very specific applications, for most of us aren't really that important. Generally speaking, modern lenses are all pretty good, um, relatively free of aberrations, quite quick to focus if you're using an autofocus lens, and generally fairly sharp. That's most lenses. There are a few exceptions, of course, but for the most part, you don't really have to worry about these things too much. So if for most applications the technical qualities don't really have that much of a bearing, what should we be actually looking for when we go to choose a lens? Well, I would argue that the things that really, really change the way that you shoot are uh, the field of view that a lens offers and thus its ability to uh, use perspective distortion to alter the way you see things and also the aperture, so your depth of field. Those two things will really give you different ways to express yourself. Now, I'm going to talk mainly about prime lenses here. A zoom lens is a very different thing because you're able to change those things by just moving the zoom ring. So if you're the sort of person who perhaps likes to uh, have a very useful, a very versatile lens in any given situation, then perhaps a zoom lens is the way to go. But here we're going to look at the way we can choose a different focal length or a different uh, aperture for our lenses to decide which lens might be best for our own applications. So I won't go into uh, specific lens focal lengths too much here because we have APS-C sensors, we have 35mm full frame sensors, and we also have medium format digital sensors, and all of those uh, require a different focal length to achieve the same field of view. So we'll talk a little bit more about field of view than we will about actual focal lengths. So suffice to say that a lower millimeter number is going to be a wider field of view, a higher millimeter number is going to be a tighter field of view or a narrower field of view. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how field of view affects our photographs. So these two images here, the first one was shot with the Laowa 9mm f2.8 on the Fujifilm X-H1, and the next image was shot on the Fujifilm XF 23mm f2 on the same camera. And you can see that there's a huge difference in the field of view. We're able to get a lot more in with the 9mm. Now this is probably the most obvious use for a wide-angle lens is just to get more stuff in the frame. And it can be quite useful for that, but there are other considerations with a wide-angle lens and how it affects the way your photographs render. So let's talk about something called perspective distortion. Now perspective distortion is the way that shorter or longer focal lengths affect the way objects at different dis distances are rendered uh, on the, the two-dimensional plane of the camera. So, for example, this photograph here was shot with a 23mm on the Fujifilm GFX, which is quite a wide-angle lens, and as you can see, this gentleman has rather large hands, 
almost as large as his head, which is not the case in real life. He also looks quite tall, which is also not the case in real life. But by using this lens, I was able to distort perspective. I was able to give you a look at the world through my eyes. This is how I like to shoot these things. So if we take a look at this shot with the normal lens on the Fujifilm GFX, which is the 63mm f2.8, you can see that it's a very different rendering of this man. Everything is much more in the proportions that we normally see. So a wide-angle lens stretches perspective out. Things closer to the camera appear larger, things further away appear smaller. So you're able to get that relative distance between things a lot more effectively. Now with a longer lens, as you can see here, the perspective is flattened out. And you can see that there's, it's very difficult to tell how close are his hands to his body. How close is he to the wall? There's very few visual clues to that. Right. So using a wider angle lens gives you that impression of depth. So let's take a look at another image here. This is again a shot with the Laowa 9mm on the Fujifilm X-H1. And as you can see, the leading lines, the lines that are coming towards the camera, get significantly larger as they're close to the camera, and significantly smaller as they get further away. This gives you a real sense of how deep and how far away things are in this scene. The next shot is a similar idea. We're quite close to leading lines on the side, but this one is shot with a 50mm on the X-T2 and that gives us a much more flattened perspective. Again, it's very difficult to see just how far away these things are from my subject. So now that we have an idea of how wide-angle lenses can uh, distort perspective or give you the illusion of depth, let's take a look at how the opposite end of the scale, telephoto lenses or longer focal lengths, will affect your scene. So in this image here, I'm shooting with the 50 to 140 millimeter on the Fujifilm system, which is a 70 to 200 on 35 millimeter full frame. So with this lens, I'm able to zoom in and bring everything a little bit closer together. We lose that illusion of depth. Everything gets squashed together a little bit more. So if I take a look at this scene on a standard lens, which is, or a normal lens, which is the 35 millimeter on the Fujifilm system, you can see that there's quite a bit of distance between each of these pillars and I'm able to get a real sense of, of depth there. And if I shot it on something wider, you would get even more of that, as things closer would seem much closer and things further away would seem much further away. However, by zooming in and using a longer focal length, what I end up doing is compressing all of that into sort of a flat plane. And this is great for really making these people stand out while still keeping that, uh, that pretty background with, I guess, a little bit of that illusion of depth. However, it's nowhere near that sort of stretched perspective that you get with a wide-angle lens. So one of the other inherent traits of a longer focal length, outside of being able to sort of flatten the world and give it less of a, a sense of depth, is that you'll get a narrower depth of field. So this makes longer lenses great for isolating your subject using depth of field or, or focus, basically. So you can keep the subject quite sharp while really blurring the background. Now, the other half of this, of course, is uh, wider apertures. So things like f1.4, f2, those things, of course, also contribute to it. But given the same aperture, a longer focal length will have a narrower depth of field. So let's take a look at an example of that. This is the 110mm f2 on the Fujifilm GFX, and as you can see, it's literally his eyes and a little of his face that are in focus here. The background is completely obliterated. In order to get this sort of depth of field with a wide-angle lens, we would have to get extremely close and use a wider aperture. So if you're looking to flatter your subject, but also keep that narrow depth of field, then a telephoto or a longer focal length is absolutely necessary for this sort of work. One of the things that does happen with a longer focal length is that because you're physically further away from the things that you're photographing, it does tend to give that impression to the viewer as well. So although this is a quite a flattering portrait, it has a very narrow depth of field and I'm really happy with it it doesn't quite get you up in the face of this person and give, make your viewer feel like you're right there. 
One of the ways you can do that is to use a wider angle lens, not necessarily a, a wide or an ultra wide, but something more like a normal lens and get in very, very close. So for example, in this image, I used the Fujifilm 35mm with 1.4, which is the normal lens on the X-Series cameras, and I got in very, very close to this little girl. It would have had a very different feeling if I'd shot this at something like 150mm, as I would have been much further away, and it would have flattened that perspective. So as I'm using this normal lens, I have to get very, very close to her in order to get a tight framing and a very, very narrow depth of field. The result of this is that we feel like we're in the scene with her, and the wider you go, the more that tends to happen. Think back again, and I'll flash them on the screen here again, think back again to the photograph earlier of the Apatani shaman. When I used the wide-angle lens and got down low and looked up at him, it feels like you're there with him. Whereas when I used the normal lens and stood further back to get his whole body in, it felt like we were somehow separated from him. So to summarize so far, wider angle lenses have an inherently deeper depth of field, you'll get more things in focus, they have a wider field of view so you can get more things in the frame, they have a more inclusive feeling to them, so when you get closer to things you can feel like you're, you're there with it. You also get more of that sense of depth, because things closer to the camera get larger, things further away get smaller. In contrast, longer focal lengths tend to separate you from the scene. They tend to have more of an exclusive feeling. They also have an inherently narrower depth of field, so you can very easily separate the subject from the background using depth of field. The final thing that they tend to do is compress the background and the subject, giving you less of a sense of how far away things are from each other, less of a sense of depth. So when you're considering purchasing a new lens, these are things that you definitely want to consider. Just what do you want to use it for? How is it different from the lenses you already own? How is this going to benefit you in creating the types of images that you want to create? So a great tool to visualize the way you use your existing lenses and give you an idea of what lenses you might like to purchase next is Lightroom Dashboard. Now, if you use Lightroom, you already have a catalog. If you don't, uh, grab the trial of Lightroom, pull all of your images into a catalog, and then upload that catalog to Lightroom Dashboard. What that does is it gives you a series of graphs um, that, that basically show you visually um, which focal lengths you use most, which lenses, which camera bodies, which ISO settings, which apertures. All of these different things get put into graphs for you so you can get a, a visual idea of what you're using most. And that maybe will point you in the direction. I mean, if you're mostly using 35mm f1.4 to make very close-up shallow depth of field portraits and you're thinking about buying a 200mm f2, maybe that's not the lens for you. Or maybe it is. Maybe you really want to do something different. So it will give you a good way to be able to sort of just take an overall look at the way you currently shoot. It will also help you to decide maybe if you actually need to own a lens. I mean if you've got a say a 50mm f1.8 sitting in the cupboard and you feel like you use it a lot but it turns out you've actually only taken it out and shot 50 images with it this year maybe you don't need that lens maybe that's not the one for you maybe you need to look elsewhere so as i mentioned in the beginning the key to all of this is how you shoot what you shoot what you want to create and that's where you need to start when looking at purchasing a lens this is a decision that nobody can make for you. I can't make this for you. Your friends can't make this for you. You have to decide which lenses are going to work best for you. So what do you do if you're just starting out and you don't own any lenses and you don't own a body and you have no nowhere to draw on? Well, I would suggest there's probably two things that you can do. And the first thing you can probably do is do a lot of research, take a look at a lot of images and say, well, I like this style. And then maybe ask a few photographer friends, what equipment would be used to create this style? That will give you a great starting point about which lens you might want to invest in first. The other thing that I would suggest is to buy a kit. Buy the camera body with the kit zoom lens. Those kit zoom lenses have a great range um, from sort of wide angle down to a mild telephoto, so a portrait length. And I would suggest getting one of those and shooting it until it breaks. Just shoot it and shoot it and shoot it. Take a look at those images later on. And once you have taken enough photographs that you're able to then take a look at your work and say, well, I feel like it's missing this, then you can start looking for a lens to fill that void. 
Yep, so there we are. We've taken a look at the way that different lenses render. Um, we've taken a look at some aperture, some field of view, how you might go about choosing your next lens. So if you guys feel like maybe I've missed something in this conversation, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'd love to keep this going so that it can be really helpful for people who watch. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We've got new content every Wednesday, so see you then. Thanks for watching.